<laughs> okay, Nikolai. Nikolai is going to present Hyperledger Fabric. Thank you. Thank you very much for introduction. Um, so my name is Nikolai. I work for IBM in the <laughs> blockchain garage here in Singapore, and um, um, uh, the topic is Hyperledger Fabric version one, which is uh, the new version that is coming uh, very, very, very soon. Um, so before going. <laughs> Um, before, is it okay? Yeah. yeah. Um, before going to version one, um, just a quick recap: why, um, why, uh, why we decided that we are ready to move to the next version. Um, so, what we've learned from version uh, 06, there are a number of limitations, and that's the current um, architecture of version 06. As you can see, there is an SDK that implements the client. Um, um, there is a membership service, which is a kind of centralized service, and there is a peer um, in the network, which is uh, doing lots of stuff. You see, it's quite busy. So um, the centralization of membership service is one weak thing, and as this peer is doing too many things at the same time, it's um, um, the throughput, um, uh, I mean, the number of transactions that we can perform is quite limited. Now, the other considerations that, um, or other limitations that we found and we took into consideration for version one, it's um, the privacy of transactions. Um, here, for example, there is a network of um, car manufacturers and lease companies. The car manufacturers are blue, lease companies are yellow, and there is a, a regulator in the center. Um, so they want to perform a transaction, and um, um, let's say there is a Nissan uh, who wants to sell the car to Liz Plus with 5% discount. In the current implementation, if all of them will be in the version 06, this transaction will be visible to all the validating peers running on, for, on, on all the uh, data centers of all these companies. Um, in the, but um, that's um, definitely we, we don't want to, like, um, to uh, be possible. We don't want everybody to see what, what, what exactly was the discount that Nissan gives to um, Lease Plus. Um, then the wall state. Wall state in the current version 06 is um, um, a key value store implemented on top of RocksDB. Um, and uh, it is quite restrictive, as you can imagine, in terms of queries that you can perform since it's a key value store. Um, we wanted to have, um, uh, basically, to have a pluggable uh, um, key value store, a pluggable uh, storage, and we want to perform an SQL-like queries in order to do um, a more interesting um, uh, more interesting analysis of the data. So this is the list of all things that we want to do. Um, reflect how the business is working um, um, in, in terms of uh, endorsement, uh, transaction endorsement um, policies and uh, um, making um, sure that the transaction goes only to the parties that are supposed to know uh, that this transaction is happening and the details of this transaction. Um, uh, scaling is another problem. Um, right now, it was limited because of the uh, way how the consensus algorithm was implemented. Um, um, eliminate eliminate non-deterministic transactions where the world stays um, uh, uh, basically goes out of sync on some of the peers. Sometimes it happens in the current version 0.6. Um, enable pluggable data store and uh, be able to uh, uh, upgrade the fabric and chain code, because right now, if you ever work with 06, it's a huge headache if you want to update the chain code in the network archive production mode. Um, and finally, remove the single point of failure, which everybody is pointing to, and that's membership service. So, the roadmap. Um, so we are, we are here in March, and this is the month where version 1.0 is supposed to be released. Um, at the end of this month, actually. There's going to be um, a huge conference in Las Vegas next week um, um, held by IBM, and uh, we expect to have a number of announcements <coughs> made there. Um, let's go into the architecture and um, architecture overview for version uh, 1. Now, as you can see, architecture has changed. Uh, we have more, more, much more boxes here. <laughs> um, the application as the case stays where it was and performs the same, um, the same thing. Um, the business logic for the um, application and uh, the keys are key wallets uh, with the private certificates of the users. The membership service becomes also 
are the pluggable and it, it, we can have a number of membership services now. So we remove the single point of failure. The peer can perform uh, two different roles. It can be an endorser or a committer. Committer peer just commits the transaction. Endorser peer performs transaction validation. Um, and we will uh, look into this um, in the, on the next um, um, uh, couple of slides and how that exactly happened. But we actually uh, uh, we decoupled this um, from, from, um, from the peer. So we, they can perform different roles, and that's how we can scale. Another thing that we did uh, in order to um, be able to perform transactions in parallel, um, we introduced this ordering service over here. So ordering service does only one thing. It takes all the transactions from the network, orders them, and then creates a block for that. So that makes, um, uh, possible, makes it possible to um, uh, do a transaction validation in parallel on different peers. And then they all send those transactions to ordering service in order to create a block. Um, and this ordering service is also it can be decentralized, so there can be a number of um, servers uh, performing this particular role. Um, and they all uh, will be like choosing the, the leader uh, every time they need to create a new block. OK, so um, I will be skipping some of the slides because I have way too many of them, as usual, with IBM. Uh, so um, let's have a look at how transaction is happening in new version. First, we have a, a client, um, which is like uh, outside of the, uh, of the network itself. And then we, we've got two types of the peers, like the bluish kind of E peer is the um, endorsement peer. And um, the um, uh, gray peer is, uh, we call it either like a P peer or committer peer. And uh, we've got the ordering service, uh, which is also uh, represented like a network in, in the architecture. So first thing that client does, it um, sends the transaction proposal to um, either the nearest peers or the peer that um, he uh, likes. The propose includes the usual thing, like the uh, function of a chain code that I want to, to um, trigger, as well as um, the input parameters. So I send in that, and uh, the, the um, endorsement peer um, executes this transaction, creates the um, output, um, and then signs it and sends back to the client. Then client takes this um, thing al along, with the, um, along the, uh, with the transaction proposal. And um, according to the policy, which is another new thing that we have in the new architecture, it sends this transaction proposal and the signature to other um, endorsement peers. So the policy uh, is a, basically a configuration. It's like a business rule. It defines that we need to get an agreement from this, this, and this. Uh, peer in order to perform a transaction, or um, it can be like one uh, big peer or like um, somebody in, like a regulator, somebody very important that needs to approve the transaction. So it's more like a business rule that defines who needs to approve a transaction before uh, we um, define that it's valid. So client sends this transaction endorsement to other peers uh, that's supposed to approve it. They execute this transaction, validate that the output is correct and then send uh, back uh, their, their uh, transaction va valid signatures. <coughs> After that, client takes this transaction and sends to the ordering service. And then ordering service creates a block um, along with all the other transactions that it received during this particular time period and then sends it, um, replicates to all the peers um, that are supposed to get it. So as you can see, the architecture becomes very decentralized. And finally, of course, they, they validate and then uh, commit that into the, uh, their world state and create a new block in the blockchain. <clears throat> so as you can see, um, the architecture is very decentralized now. We can have a number of different endorsement peers, a number of um, um, committer peers, ordering service, <clears throat> et cetera. And it allows us to perform a number of transactions in parallel. Uh, which is quite nice. Now, we also move lots of logic to the client itself. It's not, um, it, it doesn't mean that uh, client has to do all of this. It's good if um, it will do that. But again, with the configuration, we can say, um, is it going to be the client or the nearest peer who does all of this dance with uh, transaction um, uh, approval process according to the 
um, to the policy. Um, now, uh, the, the endorsement policies are actually connected to the chain code, so when you deploy the chain code, um, the endorsement policy is uh, something that goes along with the deployment itself. Um, um, this is just the example, um, as you can see, the endorsement policy basically look like a business rule. Uh, we have the endorsement set, like that's everybody in the network, in this particular channel. I will talk about the channels on the next, um, on the next slide. Um, and then we are saying that um, the new card transaction uh, needs to be validated by um, the DVLA, which is, um, in our case, it's um, a regulator, and the Nissan as a manufacturer. So only they can validate, um, or we need to get the signature from both of them in order to create a new um, digital representation of a car in our world state. Um, similar example from, uh, with the change ownership transaction, uh, that um, it needs to be moved from the car manufacturer to the lease company, as well as um, uh, need to be approved by the regulator. So all of them needs to agree first, and that's what we define in the policy. Um, there can be and or statements uh, uh, as well, so that uh, allows to create quite complicated rules and policies. <clears throat> Another important thing that we are gonna have in the new version is channels. So you may think of a channel um, as a blockchain. So right now in version 06, we've got only one blockchain or ARCA one channel. Um, with the new version, we can uh, run uh, parallel channels on the same network. Um, some of the peers can uh, uh, perform transactions on two or more channels. Uh, some of them can, can perform transactions on only one channel, etc. So here in this example, E1 um, is on two channels at the same time, red and blue. And in, oh, sorry, E0, e and E1 is uh, only on channel red. That means that E1 will never get any transaction from the blue channel. Um, and that's how we um, can establish this privacy of transactions. Um, so uh, uh, the peers that are not uh, supposed to get a transaction will never get it because they are not part of the channel at all. Um, ordering service. Um, ordering service, um, um, as I mentioned it, uh, already, it uh, just performs the ordering of transactions. It doesn't look into transactions that don't need to um, execute the transaction. Um, it just takes it and then um, orders in the block because the order is important since we're creating a hash for every, every block. Um, there is a number of, um, um, a cons um, a number of consensus algorithms that we use. Um, in the ordering service itself because it, it itself creates a, like a small network. Um, the first two are gonna come with the first release. Um, Solo is for development purposes, just one ordering server. Um, Kafka, or Zookeeper, um, is gonna be um, another one um, that basically, um, it, it allows to tolerate just the um, crash faults or bidding faults. Um, and uh, um, it's gonna be um, part of the first release. SBFT to tolerate Byzantine falls is gonna come later, maybe like one point something version. Um, it's currently under development. Okay, um, so in the new version, we can create the same architecture as we used to use in version 06. So this is an example, just one channel. Um, everybody, all the peers are executing the same chain codes. Uh, so exactly the same kind of behavior that, that we are getting here on this kind of architecture. Um, Ordering service in the center, et cetera. Um, in a multi-channel um, uh, network, the, the, the picture will be a bit different. So we've got um, uh, uh, endorsement peers zero and three on the red channel and two and one on the blue channel, and they will never intersect. But at the, then at the same time, they can use the same ordering service and um, as long as this ordering service doesn't see the transaction itself, it doesn't compromise the privacy, which is quite good. Um, so we can reuse the same service for different uh, channels without compromising the privacy, um, which I, I believe is just great. Um, pluggable wall state. Um, we've got, um, remember I, I mentioned that currently we use um, um, uh, RocksDB. Uh, with the new version um, out of the box, so we will get uh, level DB. Again, it's a key value store, but then there will be an option to, um, to switch to the couch DB, which is a NoSQL, uh, 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 NoSQL database with, uh, based on the JSON documents. Um, 
that actually brings us lots of um, lots of options to create complicated queries rather than right now we are limited to either using a key or using a composite keys kind of thing <coughs> so imagine um, everything that comes to the data analysis and um, all this crazy stuff that we um, our business people want to do with the data and last but not least is the fabric composer it's a kind of early version right now it's not necessarily going to be, um, it's not part of the 1.0. Uh, the current version works with 0.6. Uh, but that's uh, a kind of thing that, um, um, like a new tool that IBM contributes into the Hyperledger project. And it's meant to be, uh, it's meant to simplify the development of uh, the blockchain applications. Um, because right now you need to do a number of things. You need to create a chain code, you need to um, deploy it. Um, Need to then create a client-side application with either Node.js or some some other programming language. Um, so lots of manual steps, and you need to keep everything in sync in terms of like which functions you implement on which side and how they, do they interact with each other. Um, with the composer, um, we are supposed to get a number of tools that help us uh, to develop things uh, much faster. It's coming. Um, Starting from the um, uh, common, common line utilities, um, the simple uh, business-oriented language to design um, the data model and uh, the transactions, <coughs> web-based uh, playground and web-based um, user interface. Um, and let me uh, oh yeah, and let me show you a couple of examples. So that's the development playground, and this specific screen shows you. Uh, the example of the um, what is this um, the asset creation so we are uh, this tool is oriented on um, automating um, a business processes mostly so um, there are a number of concepts that are built into the uh, this um, uh, business language that they use uh, to create um, the participants of the network first like we define them as objects um, and it's a swagger like language scripting language um, then um, the assets that we're going to um, uh, put into the world state. Also, you can see quite simple, just uh, the, the type of the um, of the property, and uh, uh, we can mark some of them optional, etc. Um, and then the transactions, um, which are basically a definition of operations that we can do uh, on our data model. And then finally, we can implement those transactions um, using the processors. Um, and um, in JavaScript, because right now, as you probably remember, we can create um, chain code in Go language, in <coughs> Java, and this is an option for develop the chain code in JavaScript, which is also quite cool because it's one of the most popular languages at the moment. Um, okay, so once we do all of this, um, okay, the, the process, the development cycle would look like this. So we install the tool, we define the business network assets and transactions using this um, Swagger-like language. Um, then um, we implement the transaction um, the transaction processes, so the, basically the business logic within the transaction. Then we generate application and deploy it to the server. And then after that, we basically can uh, generate the REST APIs using the loopback connector. And as well as um, Yeoman generator can generate us some simple Angular 2 code application. Um, and we are good to, uh, and that can be a good um, um, point to, to start. Um, link is down here, it's all open source. Just go um, download, learn it. Um, it's currently an early stage, of course, um, but um, that's definitely something that um, um, uh, is gonna, gonna evolve quite, quite fast. It gets lots of traction at the moment. So with this, thank you very much, and um, I open for Q&A. Thank you very much. Everyone. So I think we have about five minutes for Q&A. If anyone has any questions, Justin. Um, so, so for the client, the client APIs, they, uh, it's going to do the controlling of uh, communication between the endorser to the, <coughs> uh, to the orderer. It can. So there will be two options. The client SDK can uh, perform all of this dance with uh, transaction uh, 
uh, endorsement and collecting of all the signatures itself, or it can um, uh, move this logic to the peer, so it just uh, uh, endorses the transaction, and then peer will do all of these approval processes for it. So there will be two options to do so that. Be a configuration file yeah, yeah, it, it will be a configuration for the channel. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then for the <laughs> yeah, please go ahead. Uh, for the channels, you say you can have multiple channels right now, right? Yeah. So, from a channel perspective, where do you create the channels? Can you create it dynamically or to predefine the channels upon creation of the uh, chain? Uh, channel is a chain, <coughs> and, and um, you um, you don't need to create it with the whole network like right now with the peers, right? You have to predefine the peers um, in the very beginning. Uh, but you, uh, in that sense, you can create them dynamically um, on the way, and uh, there'll be like, uh, yeah, I, if you want to isolate all the transactions that will be performed and um, a number of uh, and, and put number of um, um, smart contracts into this channel, so that's the thing that you can do dynamically. Yeah. Great. Time for two more questions. You mentioned that the policy can be is predefined in the beginning. You define it for the chain code when you instantiate for the chain, the chain code. code. So, uh, can the policy be changed later, or can it be defined uh, for specific contract? I want to use this policy, and for another contract, I want to. Is yeah, it possible? Policies will be contract specific. So, okay. when you deploy the the, uh, the contract, you define the policy for it. And then, if you need to update it, um, you will need to redeploy the contract. Okay, um, the the co contract redeployment will be a supported feature in the new version. I mean, it's a, it's a, going to be a, a feature in the new version. Yeah, in version one. Yeah. Uh, on which uh, blockchain network is it working? Uh, it's Hyperledger Fabric. It's the blockchain network uh, by itself, right? It's an implementation. Of the blockchain, um, uh, like processing fees. No, I mean the the network can define how they want to operate. Do they want to have processing fees or not? Fees or not? And that's the difference with uh, the other networks you probably can think of, like Bitcoin or Ethereum, uh, where um, you already restricted with something. I mean there are pros and cons for all, but um, here you the the idea is that it's a private network where you control the access who can do what, uh, what kind of transactions people can perform. And um, so you don't need, um, you can relax a little bit the, uh, the consensus requirements, like you don't need proof of work. You can use BBFT, which is a kind of relaxed version of uh, consensus. Um, and uh, you don't need the things like um, paying for transactions in order to like stop people from performing too many transactions at the same time. You can do it in different ways because you have access control and you, you basically control control access to the network and to the transactions they can perform. Okay, great. If anyone has any other questions, you can uh, perhaps step outside and continue yeah, the conversation. Yeah. Um, otherwise, thank you very much. Thank you.